Happy New Year. Hello, nice to have you join us again. And you may think I'm a little bit out of order when I'm talking about Happy New Year, because it doesn't seem like New Year's to you. But in a way, for the church, this is a little bit like New Year's Eve. So you think about New Year's Eve, December 31st, the evening before the first day of the new year on January the 1st. Well, that's a little bit of where we are right now in the church's life, because this weekend we are remembering and calling this weekend the, the last Sunday before Advent, the Sunday next before Advent, because this season we've been in since May and June, the season of Trinity is coming to a close and a whole new church year starts next Sunday. So in the same way that a new school year starts in September or the new calendar year starts in January, the church year starts at the beginning of Advent, which in this case this year is going to come on November 29th. So we're going to celebrate New Year's Eve for the church. And that's an exciting time for us because, of course, this time of year isn't just a time to get ready for Christmas, which, of course, some of you folks, I suspect, are already doing. But it's also a time to get ready for celebrating the fact that Jesus is going to come to us again. So it's a very exciting time. And there's a wonderful gospel reading that we're going to read this weekend that talks about when the followers of Jesus first met Jesus many, many years ago. And I'm going to read that. It's from John's gospel, and it goes something like this. The next day... John was there again, and two of his followers were with him. When he saw Jesus walking by, he said, Here is the Lamb of God. John's two followers heard him, and they went with Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them, he asked, What do you want? They answered, Rabbi, where do you live? The Hebrew word rabbi means teacher. Jesus replied, Come and see. It was already about four o'clock in the afternoon when they went with him and saw where he lived. So they stayed on for the rest of the day. One of the two men who had heard John and had gone with Jesus was Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother and tell him, we have found the Messiah. The Hebrew word Messiah means the same as the Greek word Christ. Jesus, Andrew brought his brother to Jesus. So that's the story about when Andrew and Simon and some of the other disciples first met Jesus. It's a very exciting time for them. And this is an exciting time for us as well. Now, as you know, on New Year's Eve, sometimes people make resolutions. Those are promises that they make to themselves to try to do better in the new year that's starting than they did in the, in the year that's finishing. Maybe better ways in which they want to be uh, supportive or caring towards others. Ways in which they want to improve their lives. And so one of the things I'm going to invite you to do as we celebrate the church's New Year's uh, Eve this weekend is to think about some resolutions. In fact, what, I what I'm going to send around to folks is a resolution sheet. So you, you might want to already begin to think about how you might want your life in the year that's starting next Sunday on Advent Sunday, how you can better show your love for Jesus and show your love for other people as well. So you might want to think about that, how you might make some resolutions to help your life show Jesus' love better. So this weekend, the Sunday is called this, this Sunday, we call this Stir Up Sunday. And there's a long tradition about Stir Up Sunday being um, not, we pray a prayer asking God to stir up our wills, to stir up our hearts so that we can try to love Jesus better. And so, and there's a there's a wonderful old custom about people getting food ready for Christmas by stirring things up. And we're going to spend some time in the kitchen in just a few minutes uh, getting ready for that. But there's the, what people would make is a pudding or a cake, and they would sometimes use holly. Now, maybe you've learned about holly. It's a kind of plant um, that they would use to decorate either the cake or decorate their homes. And sometimes we see holly in people's homes at Christmas time. And Genesis has prepared a craft for you because the, the holly has a wonderful tradition of being associated with the story of Jesus, with Jesus' uh, crucifixion, with Jesus' resurrection as well. So Jesus, uh, Genesis has prepared a craft for you folks to work on the idea and the image of holly before we go and do some cooking. So this is simple. It's a paper plate, but you could just use a piece of heavy cardboard and cut a circle out of it. I've started a circle here, so we're just going to cut around it. And once I take the paper out, I think you'll see how much better it looks like a circle. Cut all the way around. And I'm not cutting it really straight. I'm not really good at sometimes cutting things straight. But that's not going to make a whole lot of difference because we're going to attach things to it. We'll get Father Stocker to hold that up. 
or make it into a halo. That's right. And then I have some red paper and some green paper. And I'm going to make some, cut out some leaves that look like hollies. They have the point on them, like the thorns and little berries. So let me just cut a few of those out. Won't take me long. And the other way you can do this, if you don't want to cut, is you, you can just tear some pieces of paper to make them look like leaves and stick them on. And I'll do a couple of those too. And just so that you guys know, we are, we are sending this around as well. That's the craft that Genesis is working on. So you'll be able to have some directions to help work on that. So there's home. another leaf and another berry. And I actually need that back. This? <laughs> yeah. Gonna have to give up your halo for a oh second. dear so i'm gonna take this glue easy enough to find a little bit of glue on this and you stick it right there see i'm gonna glue the other one and this would be fun to use as a centerpiece maybe on your table or uh, maybe if you made some Christmas sweet, you could put this on the plate and then add it in. You see the leaves, then a little red berry, and you're going to go all the way around. And I'm just going to show you the other way that you can do it. Tear a couple of pieces, and that's really nice for filling in some of the spaces around. A little bit of glue, stick it on. Another little piece here. Another red berry, all the way around. And then this makes a really nice, you could put it in the center of your table. You could put it on a plate and put sweets in the center of it. But it reminds us again of the crown of thorns of Jesus. That's right. Or, so, if, you, or if you make the cake itself and it's not a big cake, cake you could actually just put it around the cake. Around the, the cake. The yeah. 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 And often um, when people make Christmas puddings, they might not use paper, but they might make the leaves and the berries out of marzipan or frosting and use that to top the cake too. It's very pretty. So that's a craft for you guys to work on. And we're also sending along a sheet which talks about the symbolism behind the holly and the ivy. And there's a song actually that goes with that. And we'll send that link out as well for you folks to be able to listen to that. It's a, it's a neat and really quite a lovely uh, carol that people sing um, at Christmas time or the time getting ready for Christmas as well. So that's, I think, the, the craft portion. Mm -hmm. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to take a little pause here. And then we're going to set up uh, this in the kitchen and Janice will get uh, ready to... We're show going to make a Christmas pudding. We're going to make a Christmas pudding. So hang on. We'll be right back. Hello again. We're back this time in the kitchen and Janice has everything ready to make our Christmas pudding. You guys might want to have a look at this one. Just to let you know, we're sending out a recipe with a, recipe, uh, a couple of recipes. One will for Christmas pudding. But if you want something simpler, we also have a recipe for some stirrup sundae cookies. And that's a neat kind of thing because... Uh, there was this idea that on stir up Sunday, you'd stir things up, you'd stir those ingredients up, whether for a pudding, but also for the uh, cookies as well. So have a look at those. That might be a little bit easier for you. And everyone in the family can have a chance by putting in some of the ingredients and stirring them up. So Janice is going to show you how to make a Christmas pudding. So I have some butter that I have softened up in here and it's easy to stir. And I'm going to start by putting in brown sugar. So the brown sugar goes in and we give that a big stir. Mix it all together so that your butter and your brown sugar look like they're all one thing. See, I don't know if you can really see. And then I have two eggs and they're going into, same thing, more stirring. That's the whole point is to stir, right? Now I think the legend is that you're supposed to stir clockwise, that would be east to west, and it symbolizes the journey of the wise men. So that's part of the story around Stir Up Sunday. So after I have all that mixed together, I am going to add some orange zest that I zested off an orange. I'm going to sprinkle that in, and again, more stirring. Mix that together. Just going to clean this off a little bit, get it all incorporated. Now, going to get another bowl and we're going to do our wet ingredients. 
So in this bowl, I have the raisins and the candy fruit and some almonds. And I'm going to, just let me grab my spatula. I'm going to put that in here. I have them in one bowl because I have them all measured out and together. But now, I'm going to add breadcrumbs. Not a lot of recipes use breadcrumbs, but this one does. I think it helps uh, absorb some of the moisture in the pudding. And it keeps all this fruit from falling down to the bottom of the pudding. So the fruit isn't in just one location and in the, the cake when you cut it, it's, it's everywhere. And then this is really simple, cup of flour. That goes in. And you just want to make sure all of this is coated with these two ingredients. And then baking soda. Baking soda will make it rise up. And then salt, just a bit, not too much. Again, a good stir. And then in this container, I have spices. There's cinnamon and nutmeg and clove and ginger, and that's just going to give this a really, really nice taste. And we're going to mix all of that in. And you can see this is pretty dry. So we're going to get our wet ingredients and I'm going to put about half of this in. Like that and we're going to stir. And I'm going to see if Father Stockall wants to come in and give it a stir too because everybody in the house should have a stir of the Christmas pudding. Just stir up on stir up Sunday. Yeah, this is getting heavy. It does get heavy. There we go. And then here I have, you need just a little bit of wet ingredients and I have orange juice. So I'm going to put that in and I'm going to give it a stir. And then the second part of all of this fruit and breadcrumbs and spices and flour. And again, everyone should have a stir. And there we go. That's the mixture, all ready to go. Now, what I have is a casserole dish, or they call these pudding tins too. And I have two pieces of baking paper. And I save the wrapping paper from my butter, and I'm just gonna make sure that I rub some butter on each one of these papers and put them down into the tin. This keeps it from sticking. My grandmother had special um, pudding containers that she used when she made this. I used to go and help her and I really thought that was a lot of fun. So as you can see, can't really see them in there because it's a white bowl, a white dish, but they're in there. And my whole dish is greased and then I am going to put all of this yummy batter into this tin. Just like this. And don't worry about that paper because when you turn it out after it's cooked, it will just peel away. It just keeps it from sticking to the bottom of this dish. And I'm going to spread this out on the top. that put that down in the sink there you go it's all ready to go one last step i have a pan this is actually a wok but it works well because it has a high dome lid and i have a little trivet that goes in the bottom and then i am going to take this because this cake isn't cooked in the oven it's steamed on the stove so i'm going to put my dish in and then i have some water here just everyday water and i'm going to pour it down the side of the pan until it comes about halfway up my dish and then i'm going to get the lid for this i'm going to take it over to my stove and it's going to steam for two hours you've got to keep your eye on it so that the water doesn't disappear check it every once in a while and if the water is going down the level of water just add a little bit more then you're going to cool it and you're going to turn it over let it out of the dish peel your paper away and then you're actually going to let it sit until christmas because this cake gets better as it sits so you wrap it up really tight, put it in a cool, dry place, and then at Christmas time, you can take it out, 
you steam it a little bit more and you make a sauce and you have it for dessert and it's delicious. So there you go, Christmas pudding. So that's uh, our lesson for stirrup Sunday. And of course, stirrup Sunday isn't just about making yummy things to eat at Christmas time. That's a lot of fun because I like eating yummy things at Christmas time. But it's actually about asking God to help stir up our hearts so that we can actually better love Jesus and better love others with Jesus. And so that's what we want to be thinking about this weekend as we get ready for the start of the season of Advent next weekend, the start of a whole new church year, that period when we get ready to celebrate not just Christmas, but to celebrate the fact that Jesus came to us as a small child, but has promised to come to us again um, at the end of all time, but also promises to come to us every day to be with us, uh, to help us to live and to love every day. So we're going to pray to be stirred up not just our food, but be stirred up in our love, in our lives. And so we invite you this week to think about how you might want God to help stir up your heart and your life so you can better serve and love Jesus. So thank you very much for joining us for this week's lesson. We'll be sending out uh, the information and the sheets um, a little bit later on, and you'll have a chance to follow the, the links and, uh, and work on some of the, uh, the assignments that we're sending out with those. So in the meantime, take care, and we look forward to seeing you all next weekend. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.